Ho, ho, ho! Welcome to the Christmas episode of the Game Dungeon. Today, I found a Christmas game. Not even a snow game, but all out Christmas this time. So let's do it. Deer napped. Yep, this is a Canadian game. What? All right, I admit, I've never seen this kind of menu screen before. Probably for good reason. This is rather annoying. Hey, look, I can go off the menu. What happens if I press enter? Okay, nothing, but still, a secret right here in the menu. All right, intro, I guess. Once upon a time, Santa and his elves were going to bed. Suddenly, Santa's reindeer were deer napped. You know, I think I could have drawn all of this except for the reindeer. By abominable snow people. All right. It is your job to save Santa's reindeer. You and them. Ah, so I'm a ninja with a shotgun and bombs. That seems a little overkill to me. I wouldn't think a ninja would need all that. Hell, even a shotgun is plenty for most snowman hunters. Why do we need gas masks? Remember, the only way to go to a new level is to touch a pole. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Good luck. Winter kiss. Christmas goodbye. All right, let's begin. Hey. Ah, what's happening? Stop oh, that noise. Find the magic. Ah, this isn't doing anything. What the hell is this? Okay, a shotgun. What's going on? I ran over it. Ah, I need to press a button while walking over it. Just in case I decide I don't want a weapon in a Wolfenstein clone. Okay, shut up, snowmen. And blowing them away turns the abominable snowmen into regular snowmen. Hold still so I can shoot you. Well, that's some memorable voice work there. And yes, they are shooting me. The snowmen are shooting me with invisible projectiles and with no accompanying animation. I'm not sure if I've seen this before. And I swear, I'm not trying to find things to criticize, but let's talk about your shooting. Look at this shotgun. Look a little odd? I think I know exactly what's going on here. When making their graphics, they probably made pure black their transparent color. So this right here, this is in the shadow of the bracket connecting the two barrels. That becomes the same color as the background, black. So now it's transparent and they never fixed it. Well, at least we have solid hit detection. Oh, there's the pole. Remember the pole? Yeah, nothing. I'm sure there's a procedure here, but I'm not learning it. This might be the worst game I've played on the show so far. I'm sorry, everyone. I didn't mean to ruin Christmas. Okay, that's an elf, I guess. I think this is as good as this game is gonna get. I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead. All right, so that was a lump of coal, but I found another Christmas game in case of this exact scenario. So get ready for the Christmas backup. Terror in Christmas Town. Hmm, huh. not quite the background I would have chosen for a name like that, but okay. Wait a minute. Oh no. No! Find the magic! Find the magic, everyone. It's the same thing! I'm a snowman now instead of a ninja, but that's it! And it's the same broken shotgun! There's no change at all, except this is worse because it's much more of a corridor shooter than before. There's the pole. Nothing. The enemies are the same and they turn into the same snowmen. There's no sound this time. Maybe that's better. And these are made by different people. See, look, Michael Zerbo, Nick Fletcher, and Tyler Smith. I guess great minds think alike. I'm in hell. This is gaming hell. Oh, and this is probably the emulator's fault, but if I die, I'm kicked out to the DOS prom. I didn't find the magic, guys. So, uh, I'm a believer in backup backup plans, so I have one more Christmas game. Third time's the charm, right? Okay, here we go. Sint Nicholas. I guess we're fleeing Canada to the safety of the Netherlands. Start. Okay, it's just some platformer. It has a very Super Mario World feel to the physics. That's not a bad thing. Now, I thought these were oranges, but they're actually cookies. I kind of wish I remained ignorant because I'm craving cookies right now. 
Now you might say, well, why not just go have some cookies? Well, that is a thought. But when it comes to cookies, I'm not so good at the whole moderation thing. Because if I eat a couple cookies, I suddenly realize, months later, wow, I must have eaten over 2,000 cookies. What are you doing, Santa? You know, while I was looking up something else, I discovered Oreo is coming out with carrot cake cookies. There are evil geniuses at work at Nabisco. Oh my god. Back to the game, the goal is you collect packages and cookies and then coordinate which house they belong to. If that sounds like delivering the mail to you, it is. This is no good. This is not fun. If you enjoy doing this, you should get a job delivering actual packages, then you'll get paid for it and they tend to need 10 people on the holidays anyway. It's not as bad as Deer Napped, but this game is giving me an existential crisis. How did I get here that I'm playing this game? I can't do this, guys. I tried. Christmas is canceled. No more Christmas games this year. I can't take it. But if we're not going to have games in the spirit of Christmas, I guess we'll have to get more literal and just add Christ to Christmas this year. Yeah, Apocalyptica. Let's go. So this is an action game about a holy war set in the future. Yeah, looks like we're saving Christmas from Konami this year. Anyway, like any good Christmas story, it starts off with the devil talking about himself. I am the end. I am the new way. Armageddon. This goes on for a while, and he doesn't really say much. Just that he's going to corrupt everything. Big surprise. In fact, I can't even make out what he's saying the longer he goes on. Well, you're no evil. Okay, I guess that's our backstory. Here's the menu, and while this is not a Christmas game, I don't think, I feel like this could pass for Christmas music in a pinch. Christmas music of the future. Okay, we're about ready to start, but whoa, there's a setting in the options we better adjust. Pre-cash good, good. Pre-cash evil? Uh-uh, I don't think so. Why give it a head start? I wish Windows had this option. All right, let's begin. Oh, huh, I can't complain they're not giving me enough options. They're all varying mixes of different stats. I'm probably gonna have to come back to this. I guess I'll go for whoever's best at shooting. That looks like this robot guy. All right, good enough. Now, now we are desperate. Only a handful of worlds remain uncorrupted. Okay, this is the voice of the Holy Resistance, I guess. She's not really telling us much, just that the devil is winning and we need to fight back, and that this game really wants to be Warhammer 40K, but they didn't get a license to fight Chaos Marines, so we're fighting Neo Satan instead. And the game keeps dropping all these references as if I know what's going on. Here's a quick tip. If you're making a dumb story for your dumb game, don't be afraid to dumb it down. Unless you have some master plan of exposition, don't assume I know all your made up lore. What? And now we get a briefing from Cyber Santa. Greetings, my child. I trust you are well. I am Arch Templar Samick. I take it you are familiar with your mission. It's just a bunch of tactics. Disable this force field, blow up this grate, and so on. Whatever. Here we are in Jerusalem. Time to fight the forces of Neo Satan. Now I picked the ranged shooter guy, but I'm finding that I chew through the ammo and he has a small capacity. If I'm running almost dry in each encounter on the first level, that doesn't bode well. I think I better try someone else. Plus, on a personal note, they're using the exact same gunshot sound as was used in The Chosen, Well of Souls. That's giving me some minor PTSD, so I really don't want to play this guy now. Plus, thematically, does sending in a faceless robot to gun down everyone in sight make us the good guys? Let's switch to somebody else. So next, I'll try the magic users, which might be actual angels. Cyber angels, I, I don't know. Okay, Sarah Mile, let's go. Magic has some tricks to it. You can hover fast and have a shield and regenerate health. 
But the offense isn't so good. It takes about 75% of my charge to bring down one guy. While it recharges automatically, it feels just a little too slow to my liking considering how many enemies there are. Now when I ran over ammo packs, that restored my ammo for the robot. I assumed running over Bibles would restore my mana, but no, they don't. This makes me wonder what the purpose of these Bibles is, you know, besides the obvious. I lost the manual to this game and replacement docs lost their copy of it too, so we're in the dark. And speaking of these Bibles, let's take a peek at them. Okay, this is in the future, so maybe the language has changed. But that illustration looks like their version may have taken some creative updates compared to ours. I mean, we've gone from the meek shall inherit the earth to this. So, you know, something happened along the way. Well, we have more classes. The juggernauts here are melee focused, but feel a little slow swinging their swords. But the sisters of battle here have top marks in agility. Does that mean they can attack faster? No, it doesn't. They can move faster, but I don't think that really matters. They do get a stun weapon, so that's a nice combo, I guess. But I'll say, this is the sort of game where I don't want to have to think too much. So I think the Crusaders here are the right class for me. Just running at people and bashing them with my sword, that suits me just fine. Now I should point this out, you'd think Brother Devastus would deliver the maximum amount of damage. But no, it's Saint Septivar. I made that mistake too. So this works for me. I could just run at troopers like the armored piece of meat that I am and dish out holy justice for the Lord. So again, not quite Christmas, but we're trying in our own way. The level itself is kind of drab. I mean, this canyon's okay, but the rest of this is just out in the desert by some machinery with mundane tunnels. It's not reeling me in. We'll see if things pick up. I guess we should stop corruption from spreading and all, but you know, if Satan just wanted some patch out in the desert, I'd be inclined to give it to him. But you know Neo Satan, he's never happy. Oh, and it's worth mentioning that the perspective may look a little weird, but that's the least worst solution. This is another one of those games that technically supports widescreen, except not really. So I'm using a widescreen patch. Our options are 4x3, vomit vision, or slightly weird widescreen. I could monkey around in a hex editor to trial and error things until the field of vision looked just right, but is this game worth the effort? So far, I'm not sure it is. In fact, when I was experimenting with the angels, I somehow reset the aspect ratio to something else. All the more reason I probably shouldn't be using magic. I'm just not finding the magic this year, guys. So I'm slicing and dicing merrily, and I have to say the AI is kind of bad in all the best ways. It seems to get confused when I get too close, so melee combat is that much easier. They'll also try to fire through walls when they can't, have friendly fire incidents, Whoops, there he goes. This is good stuff. Now, I will say- Wait, what's happening? Oh! I have to restart everything! That'll teach me to start enjoying the game, huh? Ugh. It's worth mentioning, this is actually a PC exclusive. I'm not sure why. When I think of PC exclusive games, this isn't what comes to mind. It could be because consoles have a certification process where a game needs to meet certain standards, and there's nothing like that on the PC. Nothing at all. Okay, after doing everything all over, I approach the level boss. Damn, she takes a fifth of my health per swing! Dead! Back to the grindstone. Thankfully, I have a checkpoint, but geez, that's a bit much for the first level. Now, I think it retained my progress a little bit because I don't think she's been restored to full health and not many enemies are respawning. So it should be easier this time. Block. Block! Ah! Right, let's do this again! Now, I tried to do this last time, but now her position has changed, so I can try to get a shot off behind cover. Come on, come on! Yes! Cowardice wins the day! Oh, huh, that's not the end? Yeah, I have to return to the sewers. This is weird level design. It's set up so you fight the boss three quarters of the way through, then either backtrack the way you came or loop back to it. Whatever, onto the sewers in slow motion. And 
I admit, that victory music almost makes this feel worth it. Ah, well done. You have managed to gain access to the sewers. Well, Cyber Santa is pleased, and I'm learning to pay attention to these instructions, since it's very easy to get lost, I'm finding. This one seems like it's just capture the flag. Get the cog, head to the enemy base, and plan it while stopping them from doing the same. And I have more teammates this time. Let's hope friendly fire is off, otherwise we're gonna have some real problems. And hey, remember how the angels have magic? Well, my teammate heals me. That's great. His AI makes it a little sporadic though. Sometimes he heals me, sometimes he doesn't. Oh well. Man, I'm getting messed up. Sarah Mayo, where are you? Ugh. All right, again. You know, both sides respawn. It's like they just took some multiplayer map and decided to turn it into a single player level. Okay, I'm holding and defending, getting the cog. Bam! Killed in one second by the boss from level one. What the hell is that? What's the point of killing a boss if all they do is come back the next level? She infinitely spawns too. This is so sloppy. This shouldn't even be part of the campaign, just a bonus scenario or something. Well, after a lot of deaths, I make it to the goal. Come on, almost there, I can do it. Okay, I'm here. What's going on? Why is nothing happening? Ah, am I tripping? What did the instructions say? Placing the gear wheel there will drain away the water and allow you to enter the city. That's exactly what I did. I need something to work with here, guys. This is not my first instinct when playing a tough game, but I'm going for cheats. What do we have? Level skip, perfect. Let's enter it in and... Oh, of course it doesn't work. I think the code is correct. It just doesn't do what the internet says it does. I think this is just a way to switch maps if I was running a multiplayer server. No shortcuts on this game. But come on, I need something. God mode. Yeah, that'll at least buy me time. Right now, trying to solve this goal feels like taking an exam where you're stuck in a tough question and then someone comes in the room and keeps punching you until you figure out the answer or else you get knocked out. I got knocked out. All right, God mode works. Let's try again. Got the gear, going to the enemy machinery. What? Oh, now it works. Now that I'm cheating, it works. Seriously, I'm doing the exact same thing I did earlier. You know, before I started making this show, stuff like this would happen and I would think I'm just a bad player or I'm crazy. No! Now we have the evidence! It's the game that's crazy! Whatever, I'll take the victory. Okay, this one looks complicated. I'll... try. You have escaped! I must confess, I was most concerned for your safety. Yeah, translation. You were never supposed to beat that level. We're impressed! And Godmo gets turned back off in between levels. That's fine. I'll just keep it as a tool in my belt in case I need it. I have to say, I really don't want to see that many objectives in this game. Oh wow, the Jihad Transporter, huh? Maybe that's why this didn't get approved for consoles. Whoa, where did he come from? Let's get a replay on that. Yep, yep. Well, I wander around, my team deserts me, I die. This map is kind of a maze. Now you might think just follow the white dot objectives on your radar, Ross. Well, sometimes that helps. The problem is this is a semi-complex 3D level. So it can tell me to go north, but I really need to be going southwest and up first. The map design doesn't help either. Or rather, sometimes it doesn't. Look at this, I'm fighting my way up some stairs. The flow of this is suggesting I should get to the top because something important is up there. Probably an objective, but maybe a power-up or another passage. Something. That's what level one did. I had to ascend the stairs to get to the boss. So what's up here? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Those hordes of enemies rushing to kill me were guarding an empty ledge. And they almost did it, too. Look at this. One health. Sarah Mile, heal me. Yeah, there you go. Wait, no, some more. Sarah Mile! Sarah Mile, come back here! Heal me! Yeah, there we go. No, more! Heal me some more! More! Come on, quit screwing around! I really need to heal this time! 
Sarah Mile! Sarah Mile! This level took me a long time. Part of it was my fault, though, since I stopped paying attention to the radar and valiantly fought my way through a squad of guards, only to discover my AI teammates had already rescued the prisoner and I wasn't even aware of it. It reminded me so much of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, where Sir Lancelot is charging in to rescue a maiden that doesn't exist. <laughs> I finally found the hidden passage so that the radar made sense, rescued the prisoner, but oh no. I have to escort him back. Okay, keep following me, that's good. Now we need to go down here. No, down here. Come on. Ugh. I don't know what I'm gonna do here. The only alternative is to bring him over this giant mass of wreckage. Oh, that worked. Good. I still don't know what to do here though. One prisoner was rescued by the AI, I'm rescuing the second one here, but look, the third one's still held by the enemy. I have no idea where he is. Alright, let's drop this one off, then I'll try to- Oh, I'm done? The level's over? <laughs> wow! This must be my Christmas present this year. I mean, how often does that happen in a game? Where you're doing something tedious, you think you're not done yet. No, better yet, the game tells you you're not done yet, and you still have a long grind ahead of you. But no, just forget about all that. You're done. Wow. This next level isn't going to go well. It wants me to do two things at once. And I'm right. I lose one of the objectives almost immediately. Hopefully I don't need it to beat the level. Cyber Santa says I need to let this decoder thing sit still to do its job, and if it's moving, it stops. I get that, but what confuses me is this timer. I think this is a countdown to the message being decoded. If the enemy has it and it's moving, shouldn't the counter stop? No, it just keeps going. So is that a separate timer? I've never been more confused by a timer than this one. If this counts down to zero, I don't know if I'm going to win or lose the level. I guess there's only one way to find out. I'll just babysit this as they keep sending former mini-bosses after me. Okay, almost there. Which is it? Five, four, three, two, one. Yes! I won! And look at that beautiful slow-motion sword whiff. Our next level is making a big deal about a boss at the end of it. I cannot wait. The objectives are relatively straightforward this time, which is almost frightening at this point. Also, I want to comment on the graphics because this is bugging me. Parts of this game look great. I mean, look at that. Nice sky, colors, architecture. But then so much of this game is uninspired stone or metal corridors. This says to me the artists can make things look good, they just didn't have time? I don't know. But let's cut to the chase. We're going to face a real boss. One of Hell's highest ranking officers, Lieutenant to Neo Satan himself, Duke Dantelion. Let's do this. Aha! And I apologize if this is hard to watch. I started circle strafing like a maniac because he looks like he could murder me, and I thought this might trick the AI. Ooh, a cutscene! Oh yeah! Wait, we had teleporters? Well, it turns out it was all a ruse since our holy starship is under attack. So off we go to save the day. Cutting that skybox a little close, huh guys? Despite this being a relatively small map, I keep getting lost as to what to do. For example, I need to place this fuse. I can't do a thing. Okay, I go here, dead end. Come back, the fuse is there, good to go. Same for the key card. Fight my way through, don't have the key card, come back, there's the key card. One nice thing I'll say about this game is they do not shove invisible walls in your face. In fact, there's a lot of areas I can go that seem like they would be significant, but have no purpose at all. Like, hey, what if I jump up here? Oh, nothing, okay. What if I jump up here, a power up? No, nothing. Now, if the game's goals were coherent and impossible to miss, I would actually like this sort of thing. But as it stands, I'm going here in desperation, not curiosity. 
The visual cues don't always mean much. Hey, look at this computer. Not important at all. Ignore this. This dead end with a metal holder off in the dark? Super important. Anyway, we unleash a freak show and rumble some more. I can't get a good look at them in motion, but I'm gonna have to freeze frame this. Yeah, here we go. A flying torso with a minigun for a mouth. Just in case you weren't sure if we were fighting the bad guys or not. So it seems like... Oh, what? I won? Wow, that one came out of nowhere, huh? Oh, no, I lost! Oh, my AI teammate must have died! Are you kidding me? I have to keep them alive? These brain-dead glitch puppets that fall off ledges that just run off to do their own thing? I thought they respawned infinitely. Oh, wow. I don't know if I'm going to be able to beat this, guys. This is something else. Okay, well, no joke. We're using the God Code now. Question is, does that apply to my whole team or just me? Okay, he's been hit. Let's enter the code and see. No, he loses health. Oh, jeez. Well, I should still keep God Mode on, just so Sarah Mile doesn't heal me and always prioritizes my teammates. That'll help our odds a little bit. Okay, we'll just have to try to keep them away from ledges like they're baby ducks. They're baby ducks with swords. And since I'm twice as paranoid now, we make it. Ugh, this is getting ugly. Next up, the armies of Neo-Satan have set up a giant Medusa gate on board our ship that we can't damage and need bioengineers for. This level starts off straightforward enough, but it takes a nosedive fast. Escorting the bioengineers is surprisingly normal, but once we reach the Medusa gate, that's a different story. Oh! Oh ho ho! You know what? I am having no regrets about using God Mode. None. Look at this. Well, I need to protect the engineers, but one of them dies anyway. Though I was slow to figure that out at first because I was distracted by the zombie Gatling businessman. Well, all is not lost because I have two more bioengineers, right? Right? My progress has stopped on the gate. What are the other two doing? I wasn't sure what to do here. These guys kept spawning endlessly. This door is locked. I need a key card. And I should point out right at the beginning, the path forked. So that means I must need to walk all the way around to here to do something. Okay, fine. I backtrack all the way over here and nothing. There's nothing here. If I come back, the goon squad is glitched out. I'm pretty sure at this point I can't complete the level but I haven't received the game over message. I honestly thought this was going to be the end of the episode. Well, at least the Medusa gate looks cool. Would be a good backdrop for a band. Well, perhaps foolishly not taking no for an answer, I started all over and tried one more thing. What if I ignore Gatling business zombie and just protect the engineer? Let's try that. Oh my, they want him bad. Oh my. I'm just using myself as a human shield. I see no other options. Can you imagine this without God Mode? I'm having trouble doing that. And wouldn't you know it, blatant cheating just barely works and we make it. Ugh. On to the next level. I do not see how you can progress beyond this point. And you know what? Cyber Santa means it. This next level, oh my god. Keeping with the trend of using multiplayer maps to pad out our campaign, it's a capture point map. I have to hold all five capture points simultaneously while the enemy team tries to stop me. By definition, I can't do all this myself. I would need to be in five places at once. This is like that trust game where you let people catch you, except in this case, I'm letting my capable team AI catch me. Yeah, this team. But no, it gets worse. The enemy spawns right next to not one, but two capture points. Look at this. Gee, that's going to be a hard capture. But wait, how fast do they respawn? Well, I can tell you. Watch. Here I am killing the sorcerer guy. Down he goes. Okay, now let's head to capture. Boom, there he is. Five seconds. 
I have five seconds before they're back up. Killing them's almost meaningless. I tried different strategies, like maybe focusing on other capture points to draw them from the enemy spawn, while hopefully my AI teammates could figure out how to tie their shoes. Oh, that went well. No, the closest I got was just running these two points next to the spawn, since at least they're close. Yeah, this is some great gameplay here. This level did finally inspire me to pay attention to upgrading my weapon to give myself a slight edge. You know, on top of God mode. It helped a little bit. I honestly thought I was going to have to end the episode here. Again! But no, we had a Christmas miracle, and I somehow managed to get all the capture points. I'm going to chalk this up to 20% strategy and 80% divine intervention. We're next taunted by another boss, but before we reach him, we have more capture points. <sighs> I honestly couldn't figure out how these worked. Either I needed to be on one and my teammate had to be on the other, or else, God help us, both teammates needed to be on them at the same time. All the while, there's a giant Valhalla battle going on right next to them. Once again, dumb luck is the answer. And I managed to rush into the door while it stayed open. Ah, ah, ah! Actually, this took me more than one try. But then we see the boss himself. And he just relentlessly spams you with his plasma gun. I don't know how you're supposed to do this legitimately, because literally every moment you can hurt him, he's shooting at you, and I don't think you can dodge him. You can take cover, but then you can't attack him. Whatever, I have god mode. That's not my problem. I'll say, though, this took a while, even in god mode. And a cutscene! Oh, look, my teammates are pretending they helped in this fight. After that is a shockingly reasonable level, or rather by this game's standards. It's still not what I'd call straightforward. For example, I have to start the generator. Okay, how? Come on! Come on, do something! What do I have to do? Oh, I needed to jump on this particular chunk of metal. Next, we have a treat in that part of the level actually looks like some effort was put into the visuals. Enjoy it while it lasts. Even the last level had one part that looked okay, then the rest is just bland corridors. This one is making much more of an effort. Once again, it's confusing, but not punitively so. Whoa, what is that? Moving on, next is some graveyard. I'm enjoying this trend of maps that look halfway good along with objectives that aren't a complete mess. Oh, and the enemies have chainswords now. I'd like to remind everyone, again, this is not Warhammer 40k. That would cost license money. From here, we enter the tower and get the big reveal. Cyber Santa has betrayed us and was on Neo Satan's side all along. How could he? Wow, we really have to save Neo Christmas this year. Well, at least his boss room looks cool. Oh, also, he's a giant centaur. Yes, this is boss fighting at its finest. I defeat him, then we get a cutscene with a moving monologue from him in his dying breath. What? Oh, he was opening up a portal to hell. Yeah, I guess I should have seen that coming. So here we are in Hell. Hell looks a lot like Quake. Who knew? Besides John Romero, obviously. And besides fire and brimstone, guess what else is in Hell? That's right, capture points. This time I have to stand on these pressure plates to make a portcullis move up. I almost couldn't believe how long this took. Ah. Uh... And another one! Does it go faster if I'm in the center? Okay, yes, it does go faster. Oh, did you see that? My teammate came to help, and now it's going slower. I guess the angel is applying anti-gravity. This isn't helping. Oh my god, this is such a snail's pace. This is taking forever! But I have no choice if I want to get through the level. Ah, come on. Okay, almost there. Wait, what's happening? No, it's going backwards. What? 
My teammate is stepping on the enemy's platform and undoing our progress. Can I shove him off? No, I can't. I'm being sabotaged by my own team. You know, Jean-Paul Sartre said hell is other people. No, hell is just your teammates. Once again, I'm not sure if I can complete this game now. I have to at least restart. This is unfixable now. I'll just have to rush to the capture point before my team and hope the enemy takes care of them. Yes, it's working! First plate! Second plate! Third plate! Time to enter the portal! Whoa! Okay, this rules. I think this means we're saving Christmas! Some interdimensional portal magic into other realities is just what I wanted for Christmas! Okay, time to activate the soul wheel, whatever that means. Ah! Yes! Take that, hell! And next, we make it to the city of Dis, where our handler is very upfront with us. You must somehow make your way across to the top where the exit is. I believe this may be something to do with raising the bridge, but as to how, I have no idea. So she doesn't know what we're doing, I don't know what I'm doing, and neither do the developers. We've hit the trifecta of confusion. I'll say this though, I appreciate games that give a sense of scale. These Escherus inspired stairways are a nice touch too. I get a reminder of why I'm using God Mode, and I complete the level, never really knowing what I was doing. And now we get a speed run at one of the most impressive looking levels so far. Why couldn't we have had more of this sort of thing? This part looks pretty rad. This is what makes me want to keep playing the game. Too bad it took 15 other levels to get here. Anyway, I rushed through this on God Mode. So much, I have to wait for the door to open at the end. Nope, not yet. How about now? Nope, still not good. Now? Yep, good enough. Success. Almost there. We have a Hell Citadel that reminds me of a level from Unreal Tournament. And God Mode gives us time to once again look at how cool Hell looks compared to everything else. We smash another Hell Gate and head on to Neo Satan himself. And it's here that our handler pulls multiple gotchas on us. First, we find out we can't harm Neo Satan, let alone kill him. Although honestly, that's to be expected. I mean, it's Satan. Instead, we're gonna have to fight his minions to make way for the angels who also can't kill him, but can contain him. Good enough. Second, she's going to close the hell portal behind us and trap us in here for all eternity. Gee, thanks. You know, I guess I was wrong. We should have sent the robots in after all. Ah, whatever. Let's go. And here he is. Neo Satan and some Lovecraft looking thing. Merry Christmas, everyone. Again, we can't hurt Satan, so Lovecraft thing it is. It's like chopping down a tree, and I have to do this four times. So for your sake, I'll just cut to the chase here. We do it. Ah! Yeah, cutscene. The angels are doing their thing? Yeah, now you're in space. Sucks, huh? Oh, I see. They're sealing him. And the angels send him off in orbit around some planet. I mean, maybe that's Saturn. I don't know. The dimensions look off. And the way the angels go, off to do angel business. And that's it. It spits me out to the menu, no end congratulations or anything. <sighs> well, it was an ending. Here, I'll click the credits for them. Yeah, Apocalyptica, I don't know. It has problems and is objectively kind of a bad game. But there was something going on there, too. The music's good. In fact, I have a Christmas present for you. The soundtrack is one of the best aspects of the game, but it's completely encrypted so I couldn't extract anything, but with Helper Elf Brian Shooter, we've recorded it directly from the game and are releasing it for download. I have no idea what the source quality is, but it's all there is. Now, you might find this was already done on KH Insider. That version has pops in the recording. And subsequently, every other source of this was copied from that and has those same errors. I even emailed the person who released it years back and asked if he had the save file so I could do it. Because I never got through this game until now, but he lost it. So that's one good thing coming out of all this. 
And we trapped Satan in an asteroid and shot him off into space. So that sounds like saving Christmas to me. And I'll give one more award, and that's almost didn't make it. I haven't covered another game on the show, or maybe even played one, that made me think I wasn't going to be able to finish it as many times as this one did. Because there are plenty of games out there that are just too hard, but that's not what this was. This was part bugs, part being completely lost, and part having to put complete and total faith in the AI to save me, which it frequently didn't. Frankly, the gameplays left me a bit stunned and not sure what to think. So I guess that's a good note to end it on. Have a Merry Christmas, but maybe don't play Christmas games. Stick to snow games, they're better. You know, I was thinking, I don't think this guy would make a very good lieutenant. I mean, what's he gonna do? Just thrash around and go blah 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 blah.